Lord, <laughs> is this person for me? I need to know this conversation we need to have. Hi there. Welcome back for another Courageous Conversation. These are conversations that we have that we want to be intentional about. We want to be bold about as people of God, Christians. Um, some of these, you can be a believer. You don't have to be a believer, but in God's word, I'm going to take a scriptural text and we are going to discuss some conversations that a lot of times we don't have but we need to have and this one y'all we need to have okay this conversation we need to have what are ways what are signs how do i know that this man this woman is for me now let me just give the premise the disclaimer already that we are talking about a christian relationship okay i'm talking about a relationship between a man and a woman and we are talking about dating to court court to marry how do i know that this person is for me i want to know from god lord <laughs> is this person for me and it's important to know we're just jumping straight into it so go ahead and get your coffee get your tea we are going in yes because this is so so important this is something that i feel like is heartfelt i always pray and ask god what to bring to the channel for a courageous conversation i just want to say that up front and so i might even start as a matter of fact let's just go ahead and pray um let's pray in the beginning of this and ask for God's leading and this is mostly for me but it's also for you to open up your heart and just really hear what God's word is saying to you dear God we thank you on today on this beautiful Sunday that you've given us we thank you for your word this is the day that the Lord has made and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for opening our hearts and our minds so we can hear what the spirit is saying to the church, what the spirit is saying to us, oh God. And we ask you, oh God, to decrease your servant and increase your spirit that those that hear the word would take it and receive it and sow good seed and multiply it within their lives that they may produce and bring forth fruit and tell someone else and plant those seeds into someone else and help someone oh god we thank you for your word we appreciate you right now we are grateful for what you're doing and what you're going to do in jesus name amen okay so we are talking about signs how do i know god is approving this relationship we're talking about there's so many relationships right so we are talking about the relationship like god i want to get married I, I feel like i'm in that place that i am ready i'm i'm single but i want to move forward into a relationship with the man with that woman of god that you have ordained me to be with and so I want to say the first thing that we have to do is have a relationship with God. We're asking God a question, right? How can we ask him a question? We don't know his voice. If he was talking back to us. <laughs> that was just an example, right? If you don't hear the voice of God, how do you know? He could be talking to you just like I was speaking to you right then. And you don't even know what he's saying. The reason why I am saying this is because that's exactly what God did to me. I was like in college and I was like, I am ready to have a relationship. I am ready to have a boyfriend. I am ready to go in full in God. I was like letting God know this is what I want. This is Lord. And I was praying literally on my knees. And y'all, God spoke back to me. <laughs> this was like the first time I had really heard God's voice. And I wasn't ready for what he told me. I thought that he was going to be like, cool, girl, I'm going to send him your way. Boom. But that's not what he said, y'all. And this is how I know it was God. Because it was something that I did not expect for him to say. It definitely made sense. Because I believe that God speaks to us and draws him to himself he draws us to himself so you there has to be a voice that is calling that is urging you to come to him right so in that call 
it you can tell that it's not you it's that urge it's that those you know that knot in your throat that feeling you get in your chest when something is right women call it intuition men call it you know those spidey senses kind of like spider-man right so when god speaks to us as he spoke to me in that moment he told me how can you how can you ask me for a relationship with a man when you don't have one with me if i sent him to you you wouldn't even know because you don't know my voice you don't know if I'm approving, disapproving, saying anything about the person. And so the scripture that I can confirm God's word with what he told me is that Matthew 633. And it says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. And so we have to seek God first. We're asking God a question. And so if we have not built that prayer life, because we say, oh, we have a relationship with God. Oh, I know God. But have you spent time with him? Do you know what God loves? What do you do you know what God dislikes? You know what I mean? And what I there's two ways to really hone in and have a relationship with God. And that is a prayer life and reading God's word. If you want to know about God, you got to read his word. There is no way we can just pray. And a lot of times we want to ask for things. Asking for things from God is not a way to get to know anybody. Do you know any relationship that is flourishing where you just take, 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 take in that relationship? So I urge you to get on your knees, go throughout your day and speak to God. If you're angry, speak to him. If you're sad, speak to him. That's how we gain that relationship. And starting a relationship with anyone, you don't, a lot of times you don't speak for hours to the person. Most of the time, it's a little bit at a time. So don't feel overwhelmed with having a relationship with God, with having a prayer life. And when I say a prayer life, set a time throughout your day that you specifically take time away from everything else turn off your phones turn off the social media i know it's hard in a world full of technology that's fast paced but we just need to slow down and hear the word of god especially when it's concerning us and our being because god is so concerned about us and so if we want to hear the word of god we have to shut out all the all the distractions let's just call it distractions because that's what it is take the distractions out of your life a lot of times i will put my phone on mute on silent because just when you want to pray someone wants to call the phone something wants to happen so take those distractions away and really i don't care if it's five minutes if it's 10 minutes i promise you the more you talk to god the more he's going to talk back to you and you're going to know it so let's talk about step two another sign because now you have you you've gain that relationship with God you're hearing the voice of God and let me just say when Lo the Lord spoke to me and let me know that I stopped immediately asking him about a man I'm just gonna say that I'm gonna be real and it was because it was a self-check I was like what did God just check me <laughs> did he tell me I he didn't he told me I didn't have a relationship with him which was totally true and when you come to God you got to be one you got to keep a 100 number one because he knows your thoughts in the book of the Isaiah it says that his thoughts are not our thoughts his ways are higher than our ways his thoughts are higher than our thoughts and so we have to realize that in speaking to God we got to keep it 100 okay we cannot hide and feel like you know i don't want god to know about that he already knows y'all he just wants us to acknowledge that so i stopped asking him for a man and i really got into god's word i start i became you know i don't even think a prayer life is something i'm gonna set aside a time every day i just knew with starting a relationship with someone you basically talk to them like every day i talk to my husband every day i talk to my best friend every day um there are people that i talk to at least a couple of times a week but i knew that if god is supposed to be as a christian the most important thing in my life and it says seek ye first seeking is a different thing than looking 
Okay, I can look for something. But if I'm seeking it, I am pursuing it. I am consistent. I am adamantly looking for that thing. And seeking God and seeking him first, I wanted him to be a part of every day of my life. Which brings me to tip number two in a sign, and that is to acknowledge him. And so in Proverbs 3 and 6, it says, In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Paths is plural, y'all, because there we got a lot of journeys. We got a lot of paths. We want to make sure that the direction that we're going from seeking God first will be the path to eternal life. So let's talk about the word acknowledge, y'all. I had to look up the definition, and it says to accept the existence or truth of. A lot of people have their truths right now. My truth. Well, if we're asking God, we want his truth because really his truth is the only one that's really going to stand. His word does not pass away. All these things in the world is going to pass away, but it says his word will stand forever. So that's the truth that I want to go by. Okay. I know I can speak my truth and really my truth is my opinion, but God's truth is the one that's going to stand forever. So I definitely want to be after I seek him first. And it says, all these things shall be added unto me. That means my man, my money, my honey. It, all of those things are going to be added if I seek God first. So it says, all these things shall be added. That means that after I seek God, those things are going to come to me. But then in those things that I'm asking God, I want to make sure that I'm not asking something that is out of his will. Because sometimes we don't know how when God tells us no, and that is a whole nother courageous conversation that I want to talk about. When God tells us no, it does mean something else. It does mean that God has something better for us. Just know that God has our better, he has the best intended for us. He's, it says that in Jeremiah, it says that we, he, he wants us to have good things. That he is looking at our end. Acknowledging God is not telling him, like I said, not telling him what we want, but we are acknowledging God in prayer and we're saying, God, this is what, this is the man that is before me. I'm starting a relationship with him and I'm getting to know him. Should I pursue this relationship? And the way that we know that this works, y'all, again, is in God's word, okay? There is a particular particular scripture there's a particular story and it's about David and David's wives and the children they're in Ziglag and he actually you know people are wanting to kill David but he says he puts the ephod on and he acknowledges God and he says God this is my dilemma I am in trouble should I pursue these people? You know, they've taken the women and children captive. Should I pursue? And God responds to him and says, yes, pursue. And you're going to recover everything that you lost. So this lets me to know that God will respond back to us. Okay. Which leads me into tip and sign number three. Psalms. 3723 states that we have to have our steps ordered by God. A good man's steps are ordered by God because God loves us and he orders our steps. That's the reason why we're good. We're not good on our own. It says a good man's steps are ordered by the Lord. What is making me good? I am being ordered by God on what to do. Now we said already in the previous sign that it says that in all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct our path. Now our paths, so to speak, let me put that plural on there because it's just not one path. He's is different decisions. And that reason why it says paths, it's talking about our decisions. Okay, so being ordered by the Lord means that we are waiting for the answer a lot of times we ask god for things and then we're like or we tell him what we want and then we turn around and do it 
We have not waited for the answer. We definitely have to read God's word. We have to have a prayer life. We have to acknowledge God. We have to pray and ask him, is this for us? And then in the end, wait for the response. I know it's hard. It's hard to wait sometimes when you're anxious, but wait, I say on the Lord and mount on wings as eagles. Thanks so much for the courageous conversation, you guys. Put it down in the comments what you think about this conversation and how has God worked in your life. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.